I'm Kelly Harrell, author, animist, and creator of the Weekly Rune. Solenton Arts is my soul-tending practice, and you're listening to What in the Weird, my podcast in which I talk about runes, actionable animism, soul-tending, and how all of those intersect through sacred activism on my path. The Weekly Rune is out, and if you're not sure what it is, it's a rune cast that I've done for years focused on the runic calendar and the current half-month rune. You can find the archive of all of the rune casts on my site, solentonarts.com, and if you're not sure what a half-month is, listen to the early episodes of What in the Weird, or just go read the Weekly Rune at Solenton Arts. It's explained at the beginning of every rune cast. I want to thank everyone who listens to the podcast, especially those who send in notes. I deeply appreciate your support, and I'm thrilled by your love of the runes. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters who make the sharing of my rune work through the RuneCast and this podcast possible with their financial support. Both are labors of love, and even labors of love cost somebody, and that somebody is me. The production of the RuneCast and the podcast each require platforms and equipment to produce, none of which is free. So if you've benefited from the RuneCast, the podcast, or even the ton of free articles on the runes, animism, and soul tending on my website, you can show your support through buying my books, which you can also find at my website, soulintentarts.com, by making a one-time contribution through PayPal, or contributing regularly through Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and search for Kelly Harrell. It's K-E-L-L-E-Y-H-A-R-R-E-L-L. And thank you for it. Uruz is the half month in this week's cast. And the framing of the other runes in the cast references a nuance of Uruz that I find really interesting, and that is polarity. If you haven't seen the whole rune cast, go read it so you know what those other runes are and what they're saying, how they're influencing this whole thing, and this episode will make a whole lot more sense. We talk about Uruz in its relationship to the primal unconscious, right? I mean, that that's the buzz phrase that gets passed around. It's like primal nature. What the hell does that mean? I mean, for most people... It, it, it comes into the frame of reference as this part of us that just doesn't give a shit about the niceties or limitations of society or the systems that we live in. And anytime Urus comes up, there are always some people in the crowd that take it to an extreme and they think it means anarchy or chaos, baby. That, that whole idea that you can't be in an embodiment of primal unconsciousness and still hold compassion. But the reason that they think that is because they don't know what the unconscious is. And if you don't know what the unconscious is, then you're operating on an outdated understanding of Uruz, which means you're not making the best use of it. When we talk about the mind, we tend to think of it as this one thing we possess that somehow situates in there with the soul and the body, our personal cosmology, or at least that's what I call that whole mind, body, soul, new age thing that people talk about, but they don't really know what it is. It's, it's what, you know, the mind is what keeps us from doing really dumb things, or in some cases from doing really brilliant things. Because when it comes down to it, the way our mind works is all about the wiring, Right? But the wiring is where our understanding of the mind needs to update to now, to the present, to how we really actually work, and see it not as this monolithic singular entity, but as its own complex that is, in a way, a micro-personal cosmology. We're out of the box. We're ready for that. We can handle it, right? Tell us, yeah. The mind complex is the conscious mind. It's the ego It's the unconscious mind, the transpersonal mind. And for those of you who are really off the hook, there are other components of those levels that are shadow selves 
and soul aspects. So we know the conscious mind is like what we're doing right now. We're talking, we're listening. The ego is the part of us that kind of insulates and tells us who we are in reference to what we're hearing, seeing, interpreting. The unconscious mind is the part that is also uh, witnessing, interpreting, but we're not aware of it. it. It's our formed beliefs, deep, deep beliefs about what's going on in the world around us, what it means for us and our safety. And we respond from the unconscious mind without ever knowing exactly how it's influencing what we're thinking and how we're responding, unless we take the time to learn that. The transpersonal mind is where we cease to be an individual and we are in this collective awareness, a collective consciousness, universal consciousness. Shadow selves, they can be a component of the ego. They're, they're parts of us that get um, usually isolated because something happened, because something outside of us diminished some aspect of our power. And you could say the same thing about soul aspects, but they're different in that they depart. They're not just over in the corner sobbing. They are gone. And we don't have access to any of the good stuff they bring. And in the lack of them, pretty crappy stuff builds up. So there's a lot going on that influences this mind complex. And what that means is we are all of this stuff happening all at one time. It is simultaneous. We are the doer while we are also the mind observing what we're doing, all the while running commentary around the act, what, what's its outcome, what our sister thought about it, what it means given her astrological sign. The mind is doing all of that at one time. All these different components are, are computing and observing and forming a narrative that we take into uh, possession as a belief system and carry it evermore unless we realize that process and become active in it. So what we derive from all of that that's happening simultaneously, those layers of mental engagement and observation, they form a narrative that shapes our self-awareness. It shapes how we see ourselves in the world. And the big 411 on that is if we really want to be good animists, if we really want to weave our weird effectively, if we want to fulfill our calling and leave this place better than we found it, we have to get really good at understanding our mind complex and where all of its input is coming from, what it's doing with that input so that we can have better control over its output, control over how we respond to life. And that is what Uruz brings us. Nothing about what I'm going to say is easy. I haven't mastered it yet fully. Good effort, but not fully. But few people have. And yet I find complete value in this information. It keeps me sane. Do with it what you will. Something I've observed in my 20 plus years of teaching others, working with other people through my animistic and soul tending practice, is they are terrified of what they don't know about themselves. They are way more frightened of what they don't know about themselves, meaning they're unconscious, than about other people, other dynamics. And the assumption that's made in that not knowing is that what they don't know is bad. It's terrible, it's a secret, and if it was meant to be known, it already would be, so nothing good can come from it. But here's the thing, and Uruz demonstrates this more than any other rune, in my opinion, and that's our wild untamed is neither good nor bad. It's neither shadow nor light, it's none of those things, because those concepts are constructs of the systems that we live in. They're not even earthly physical. They're made up bullshit by a controlling authority. And I mean, throw a rock and hit any controlling authority. That's where these ideas, these polarities come from. Our unconscious is life force. It is the base 
life force of who each of us is, where we stop and start and verge into the transpersonal that is everything else. That's what we are. And all the crap that happens to us in our lives is what bends the wiring into a twisted mapping of the mind complex. Yes, there can be issues in how we form physically or traumas that contribute to how we express our unconscious, absolutely. But the unconscious itself is still just raw life force. So what? Well, the what is, and this is the big drum roll part, our shadows and our true self, sacred self, whatever you want to call it, Our shadows and our true selves are expressions of the unconscious. These dualities, these parts of ourselves that we think are good, exceptionally good, and really, really bad, they're not mutually exclusive from each other. They don't live in completely different realms. No, they don't just live in the same neighborhood. They live in the same house. They are each side of the coin with even more mystery holding them together. And my point in this is, when people approach a ruse, they think that it has to be this berserker, wild-ass, untamed havoc. And it can be. If you haven't done the work to realize how outside systems have separated you from your base life force, you probably react poorly from that level. And it doesn't just have to be like some person that we think is an asshole. That untamed havoc can be post-traumatic stress disorder. It can be when you're responding from a pattern rather than from your unconscious, pure life force. And because of that, your raw life force can also be wild-ass creation and compassion because they all are connected. They're all originating from the same place. We can't do shadow work without also doing sacred self work. It is simultaneous. It is not separable. We can't embrace the strengths of our sacred selves, yes, selves, plural, without knowing our shadows. And we can't chastise ourselves for our shadows without also reveling in the power of our sacred selves. There's no better example of fearing our wildest success than the challenges that Uruz presents in forcing us to know our shadows and our sacred selves because they aren't divisible. Our shadows are our greatest power and our sacred selves are our greatest fear. I'd like to close this episode with the Uruz affirmation from Runic Book of Days. I am my shadow. In knowing all of me, I'm free to be. That's it for this episode. If you have questions or insights about working with the runes in season or you just need a cheerleader, feel free to email me at kelly at solentonarts.com or call in through the Anchor app, which you can download for Android or iPhone. Also, Check out earlier episodes by downloading them from Google Play or iTunes and all the other podcast platforms out there. If you get a chance, check out Everyday Animism, which is a podcast that I co-host with a couple of other lovely ladies, also on Anchor. And other podcasts you might enjoy are Around Grandfather Fire, hosted by James Stovall and Sarah Odinson, and also Why Shamanism Now, hosted by Christina Pratt. You can learn more about me and my work by visiting solentonarts.com or on Instagram at Kelly Soul Arts. I'm Kelly, and this has been What in the Weird.